Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd, as well as our friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today, we're going to work on the Roundabout Crochet Coasters. This is using Cotton Yarn, the Lily Sugar and Cream line, in order to make this fabulous coaster. So let's talk a little bit about that, and let's talk about the pattern, and let's get you started today. So here's an example of the Lily Sugar and Cream line made by Yarnspirations.com. So this is 100% grown in the United States and then it's shipped over to Canada where it's dyed and then it's put right back out. So it's a nice North American product to be able to use. Now it's 100% cotton and so this is perfect for the kitchen whether you're using it as a pot holder, whether you're using it to absorb water, whether it's a dish rag or a tea towel, a cotton yarn is the way to go for anything like that. So because this is a coaster you may have water that's dripping down the edges onto the coaster, cotton yarn is the way to go definitely for this. To play today you'll need a four and a half millimeter size uh, US 7 crochet hook in order to play and then you just need a tapestry needle just to weave in your ends. Let's talk a little bit about the pattern next and let's begin that. So here's the pattern is just a one pager really quite simple and you can see that it has a main color with just one ring around with an additional color to make it just an accenting. So of course the colors are very subjective to your own creativity and to your own personal lifestyle on what colors that you most value. So today I'm going to be using some different colors in order to uh, show you today and you can see that there's different colors that they suggest in order to have a really kind of a cool funky set and of course you can use other colors uh, later on in other projects. Maybe you want to make a, another one totally interior of yellow and then a ring of something else. So you have a lot of fun with these particular ideas. So let's uh, begin and let's get started. So let's create ourselves a slip knot and let's get started and where you're going to be using a four and a half millimeter size US 7 crochet hook and let's insert our hook into the slip knot to begin. So you want to chain a total of three. So remember the one on the hook that you start with never counts as one. So you have one, two and three. So now going into the very first chain right down here where I'm pinching is that we are going to put 10 half double crochets into that. So you just wrap the hook first and then going into that same ending chain right down at the bottom and then yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through all three loops and that's a half double crochet and you need to do a total of 10 of those. So, so that was one. So just wrap the hook and going into the same chain and you wanna do that so that you can count at least 10 of those going all the way around. So please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So here's what it looks like and so you can count back on there if you just separate it. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So the first chain two doesn't count as anything and you'll see that here in the pattern as well as a note that the chain two at the beginning of the round does not count as a half double crochet. So you make sure you don't count that and when you came all the way back around you make sure you join to the top of the first half double crochet and not into the chain two. So go right into the top of the first half double crochet with the slip stitch and pull through and through to conclude all the way around. So let's move on to round number two. So in round number two we're going to chain two. Remember that doesn't count as a half double crochet. It's more of a builder and that's typical for half double crochet just in case you're new to crochet. So right down right where you have the joint already you're gonna place in two more half double crochets right into the same stitch. Okay so you got one and two. Now here's the thing about this round. This round is really quite simple. Every stitch around is gonna each have two half double crochets. So you move to the next one and put in two half double crochets and then go to the next one and two half double crochets and so on. So I see at the end of this round two half double crochets in each all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around and I put in two half double crochets into each. See this one right here? People think that's a stitch and it's not. See how it's leaning towards this? So that means that that is part of this original stitch. So when people get thrown off and doing hats or anything like that they put in extra stitches and this is where they'll go and do it. So you should be able to count 10 groups of two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. And so when you get all the way and get that ten you just go to the top of the first half double crochet not into the chain two because it doesn't count and just go right into the top of the first half double crochet and just join it with a slip stitch like that. And you see how it brought everything together. So you would have thought to add in the extra stitch when in actual fact you shouldn't and you don't need to. Sure. So let's move along to round number three. So let's start round number three and we're going to chain two. Remember it does not count as a half double crochet and you're gonna put one half double crochet into the same one that you did the join with. So you just got one into that one only. So here's the repeat pattern going all the way around as you do this. So the next one will have two 
half double crochets into the same one. So one and two and then the next one is just gonna be one by itself. So it's just one half double crochet. Okay, so the next one is gonna be two half double crochets in the same one and then the next one is just one. So please do that same idea going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way back around if your counts are right the last stitch that you're doing is gonna have two half double crochets in there. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to finish off and then you'll have two into the same one and we're going to join with the top of the first um, half double crochet but here's the thing. We want to get rid of this yarn first. So what we're gonna do is that we're going to slip stitch and we're gonna go into the top of the first half double crochet that you started with and instead of grabbing this yarn to slip stitch what you're going to do is you're gonna grab your new yarn and I like to create a slip knot. It's just as a, a little bit of a security for me and I'm gonna place that onto the hook and I'm gonna pull through that stitch and through the other one like so. So now I'm just gonna grab the other peach yarn here and now I'm gonna trim that with my scissors. So it's out of the way and what I'm gonna do then is that I'm gonna start round number four. So I have actually what appears to be three strands. So I have two that are cut just like you see and then one that is leading to the ball. So let's move on to round number four. So let's start round number four and I'm gonna show you and we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna put one single crochet into the same one that you did the join into. Okay, so we're gonna come down and just right where you did the join and what I want you to do is that these two strands that are loose just like you see you wanna lay them down on top of it and you want to have it so that the other yarn you're working with goes right up over top and hides it. So you're gonna single crochet kind of around it so it gets stuck right in between the stitches. So the next one is gonna be one single crochet by itself. So you're just gonna continue to go keep this down on top and single crochet and then the next one is going to be two single crochets into the next. Okay, so we go one and two. Okay, just like that. So the repeat pattern to go all the way around this is that the next two will be single crochets by itself. So one and two and then the next one is gonna be two singles crochets into the same one. So one and two. Okay, so do you get that? So there's gonna be two singles by itself and then two into the same one and so that will span you all the way around. So please do that all the way around for round number four. So as you come all the way back around you're continuing the pattern as you know. The last one if your stitching is right will be two singles into the same one. So one and two and we want to join it then to the top of the first single um, crochet. But here's the thing, we're getting rid of this color now. So you can just trim it before or trim it after, it doesn't really matter and then you're just gonna grab the new yarn. Again create a slip knot if you want for extra security and then you're going to use that yarn to pull through to finish that off just like that. So like before we want to start the next round and we want to isolate the two yarns that are just cut and you wanna pull those around the front so you can see those and then you're gonna begin round number five which is the final. So to begin number five which is the final you wanna chain two. Remember it doesn't count as a half double crochet. Coming into the same one right below is that you're going to half double crochet in. Again you're trapping these yarn strands on top uh, just inside the stitches. So just going in making sure they're lying down on top so that you go right up and over and it's gonna be one half double crochet in each stitch going all the way around. So just continue to do that. So one in each and continue to bury these loose ends in for about an inch or two. I would recommend two inches, why not, right? So once you have it buried in enough you can just safely trim those out and if you haven't trimmed the other ones out, I haven't, I could just turn it around and just isolate those out so I can get rid of the first one and this one here so you don't see those and then you can just continue to go all the way around just like that. So just half double crochet one in each stitch all the way around. I'll see at the end and I'll show you how to hide in your loose ends with the darning needle. So as you come all the way around you're just going to half double crochet one into each and remember this one that's leaning over is part of this one here. See this line here that's normal within a crochet if you think it's an error it's really not it's just the way that stitch work is. So you're just going to then just join it to the top of the first half double crochet and you're done. So what I wanna do is that I wanna take this strand here and I wanna finish it off with the darning needle. So just using this strand just pull through the final loop and it will lock it in a position and now we're gonna get rid of this string. So to do that 
if you don't hide it in now it's gonna fall out after or while you're in use and you'll notice it before anybody I'm sure. So what you're gonna do is just put it into a darning needle and you're just gonna glide it up underneath the stitches just like so. So you go in about an inch and then across and pull. Now when you pull it don't reef on it so that you change the shape and then you're just gonna go back in through the a different section but in the, in the same direction you just came from. Okay, just go back and go for number two and then just again go back one more time for number three. So if you continue to do this and, and go back and forth three times what happens is that this work can never fall out because your work can't stretch in three diff different directions at one time. So then you can just safely trim it down to the project and you can shape it and now you're good to go. So this is the, uh, the right side of the project. This is the other side just like you see. So if it flips over it's really not a big deal but it's actually kind of a neat project to work on at the same time. So if you're looking for, for some coasters this is a great idea. Make sure you use cotton yarn in order to be able to have it washed if you need it to and if it gets wet it's not a big deal because it is cotton. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Yarn Inspirations as well as my uh, thecrochetcrowd.com. Have a great day. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.